What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a pictogram. So let's go. So what is a pictogram? Well, a pictogram is a way that we can represent data, show a value using pictures. So let's first look at something we might have seen already and let's have a look at this tally chart. So we can see the question, how many cupcakes do I eat every day? And we can see on Monday, I have five cupcakes. On Tuesday, two. Wednesday, I have six. Thursday, I have one. And then on Friday, I really treat myself and I have seven cupcakes. So already we can represent that data using what we call a tally chart. And we can see it here next to these numbers. So five could be represented with four down strokes and then one line closing the gate. Two is just two down strokes. Six would be closing the gate and then an extra one. And then one would be just one line on its own and seven would be a closed gate and two spare. And the reason that a tally chart is so good is because we can see this number very easily because of the closed gate. I know every group of these is five. So if I had lots of these in a row, I could just count them five, 10, 15, 20, 25, etc. Makes it very easy to count. But we also have a different way of showing this. We could use pictures, hence pictogram. So because I'm looking at how many cupcakes I eat each week, I could represent this data showing pictures of cupcakes. Now you're gonna to have to forgive me because I am no artist. So in this case, I could show on Monday I had five cupcakes. There's one, there's two, three, four, and five. Okay, they are worse than I was expecting. Tuesday I only had two, one, two. Wednesday I had six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Thursday I only had one, my healthy day. And Friday I had a whopping seven, five, six. And they're even coming over my face because I want to eat them so much, seven. So let's tidy this graph up a little bit and use actual pictures. So this is what our pictogram would look like. So we can see on Monday, I have one, two, three, four, five. On Tuesday, I have one, two. Wednesday, I have six, three, four, five, six. Thursday, just the one. And Friday, the seven. So when we're doing a pictogram, there is no need to put a number or a tally. All we need to put is these little pictures, but there is an important variation. Because if it doesn't tell you, each of these cupcakes has a value of one. So we know that this Monday has five. But sometimes each of the picture of the cupcake might represent another amount. For example, if we look at this chart here, how far do I drive each month? And we can see we have January, February, March, April, and May. But if we look over here, we can see that one picture of a car equals eight miles. And we can see that some of the cars are only in halves, some are in quarters, some are in three quarters. So now we've got a little bit of maths to do in order for us to calculate the amount. So if we look at this first example in January, we can see that the first car is eight miles, the second car is eight miles, but the third car is only half a car and half of eight is four. So the amount that I traveled in January is eight plus eight plus four, which is 20. So I traveled 20 miles in January. In February, I've only traveled three quarters of a car. Well, what's three quarters of eight? If half of eight is four, another half of that would be two, add them together, I would get six miles. March, I've only got one complete car, so I know that's eight miles. But in April, I've got one complete car and one quarter. And we just worked out that a quarter is two miles. So in April, I'm traveling 10 miles. And in May, I have one and a half. So I have 12 miles. So this is an important variation of pictograms. We can have this little key over here showing how many each of those pictures is actually worth. So let's draw a pictogram for this question here. It says, how do I get to school? 
So we're going to give ourselves some options. First option is people could walk. Second option, they could get a car. Third could be a bus. Some people might use a bike. And some people might use a plane. Imagine. Okay, so let's draw my chart again. Hopefully you can be neater than I am. I don't have a ruler. But I'll try and be as neat as I can. There we go. And let's say for this picture, we're going to use just the picture of a circle. So now let's give this circle a value. We can either make it one and just have each circle meaning one. But in this example, we have a total of 40 people giving the data for our pictogram. So I don't want to have to draw 40 circles in my chart. It's going to look very messy and quite hard to count. So I'm going to say that each of my circles has a value of two. That means a half circle will obviously have a value of one. So let's begin. And the ones that walked, we had a total of 10. So how many circles am I going to draw? Well, if each circle represents two, I can count up in my twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. There we go. I have ten people represented in my five circles just there because each circle represents two people. How many took a car? Well, it was six. So again, let's go up in twos. Two, four, six. How many took a bus? The answer was 11. So let's go up in our twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh, okay, I've got a problem. So I can't use this last circle because that takes me too many. So what am I going to have to do? That's right, understand that I have to draw half a circle. That represents 11. How many people use their bike? Well, the answer was 12. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And then how many took a plane? Well, it was only one mega rich kid who took his plane to school. Do you believe me? So how am I going to show one? That's right, a half circle. And there we go. We have just created a pictogram. Your turn. Can you work out how many the total was for each of these categories? This question said, a class's favorite colors. And we had red, yellow, blue, orange, and pink. And then we have the data shown in these circles. However, each of the circles is worth four votes. So what are my totals for each of the colors? Press pause, work it out, and put your answers in the comments section. I'm going to mark them all. And there we go. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, head on over to themathshelter.com where you're going to find loads more videos to help you with everything you need to know about maths. But for now, guys, see you in another video. Peace out.